As our stay at home wears on and our lives continue in whatever ways we're able to have them continue, we may be pushing away a very strong emotion, that of grief. So today we wanted to talk about the different types of grief that we may be experiencing and to offer some ways of of dealing with them. Joining us now live on Skype is our relationship guru, Dr. Kirsten Lynn Seal. Uh, thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, yeah, thanks for having me. So you don't traditionally think of grief with something like this. Um, can you explain what we're talking about here? Sure. Well, the thing that is so tricky about the time right now is that there are some very clear things to grieve. Like if you if someone that you love is ill or has died, that is a very clear loss. And there's a lot of grief around that. There's a lot of grief also around not being able to be with our loved ones in the hospital, not being able to have as many people as we would want as, as, at a funeral, all those sorts of things. So that's sort of like the immense sense of loss is um, one of the things we talk about when we talk about grief. But that's a, that's a clear grief. We, we know that that's what it is. One of the things that I see a lot right now is that people are having some very sort of confusing types of grief. One of them, for example, is something we call anticipatory grief. And that means the grief, something bad hasn't necessarily happened to you personally, but you're very, very worried about it. Like we know from mm. recent polls that the vast majority of Americans are really quite worried about getting ill or about having their family members or loved ones get ill is with that this a, virus. Is that kind of a cousin to anxiety that leads into that or how? So, yeah, it's well, it's connected, do you know, I mean, but I would say that they're two separate things okay. because the anticipatory grief is the, the, the feeling of what if my father gets sick? Mm. What if my grandmother gets really sick and dies? Do you know, is the, is the, is the prepare, it's like a preparation for loss, Got which it. is different than anxiety, which is anxiety is more like a preparation for fear. Hmm. Right. So yeah. That's how I would say the two things are different, right. although they're certainly they, they weave together and they're kind of conflated. It's hard to sort of separate yeah. them. Kirsten, that um, is exhausting, though, to have oh. this grief about something that hasn't happened, but you are so worried that it will. Yes, and everything in our daily lives is sort of, there's this drumbeat ar around it. There's, you know, in New York City there at 7 p.m., everybody bangs pots and pans and yells out the window for the healthcare workers. Here we've got that great NPR thing right before six when we all sing a song. Um, you know, the streets are so much calmer. Restaurants, shops are shuttered. There's no way to get away from this unless you really sort of um, kind of kind of go on lockdown sort of emotionally wow. and mentally from all of the information that's around us. And it is exhausting. And the other thing that I'm seeing, and what I recommend is people try to sleep more. I'm seeing people say, I'm sleeping longer. We hear about people are having more complicated dreams. That's partly because <clears throat> they don't have to get up as early. And, and, and so the dreamscape stays longer and therefore we're more able to remember it. But these are all, these are all um, it's a very heavy, heavy load on us. There are other kinds of grief too that you're talking about, right? Yes, uh, one of the things that I see a lot, and of course, and I am also, of course, managing these in my own life, but is this, the grief of our old life, the way things used to be <clears throat> as things go on, it's becoming more and more clear that there are really gonna be some changes in our lives, you know, that the new normal of now might really be our new normal to a certain extent for quite some time. And so that grieving of the things we used to do, the things we used to be able to do sure. is, a, is, a, is a pretty deep, um, deep sense of that. Um, I heard a story about someone who had a socially distant um, date with with a friend and had sort of a, a nice time there. They had masks, they were far apart. But then about an hour or two later, she began to be very, very um, sort of sad and was and realized that that was grief. So hmm. grief for the fact that she couldn't hug her old friend, grief for the fact that she couldn't um, she, she couldn't do the things that she would normally do with a loved one. And that's, I think, what su is surprising for folks is that that is grief. You know, why are yeah. we having this reaction? It's, it's grief. We are grieving so the loss can, of our old lives. So what can we do about it to manage so, it? Um, there's, there's, yeah, there, there, there are a couple things to do. And some of these hacks, as I call them, might seem a little odd. But one of the things that's interesting we are unable to be as close to people as we usually have been. And that, because of social distancing, which is really important to do to stop the spread of the virus. But one of the ways we can fix that, like for example, we could literally, sometimes I do it like virtual hug, but actually if you grab your own self and rock back and forth a little, the actual physical mm -hmm. feeling of touching something can be really helpful. Weirdly, 
cuddling a pillow or a stuffed animal, like there's a reason that that is helpful for small children. And even though it may sound really weird, Mm -hmm. I I encourage you to try it. We are human beings and as human beings, we need to be close to each other. If we can't be close to each other, even cuddling a pet, although pets often have their own ideas about (laughs) how long (laughs) they might like to be cuddled. Um, So there there is an actual physical piece. These things are real, right? No matter how small or how matter uh, uh, distant, These fears may seem, if you're looking at it objectively, like these are things that you need to grieve. These are things that we need to grieve. And then the third type um, that I'd really like to mention is this, the grief around our powerlessness. Do you know? It can feel that we have no power. And that can be devastating. And it can also be paralyzing. And so the thing that I think is really important there is when you're feeling like that, when you're feeling like there's nothing I can do, is to is to bring the focus back in, back into our own small domains of our own reality and think about what we can control versus what we can't control. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I've also heard mm-hmm. from people that suddenly now they're really worried about, say, their children getting into like, accidents on their bikes or something happening. And I would argue yeah. there's a reality in that, in that our emergency rooms aren't functioning the way that they used to, mm-hmm. you know, in our old lives. Right. Um, I mean, they will get back there again, but there's a lot more fear around right. taking a child with a, you know, what if they break their leg off, falling off their bicycle, mm-hmm. that becomes a whole much more loaded um, thing to manage. Right. And so mm-hmm. when we have those, the grief around powerlessness, what I think is really important is to say to ourselves, what can we control and what can we not control? Kirsten. And focus on the things we can control, calming ourselves, listening to sad songs. If we need to cry, watching a sad movie, the right. crying is important. Acknowledging of the emotions that we're having yeah. is really important because we know there's so much yep. research about this that when we sit on our emotions, they come out sideways. And that isn't and that doesn't help right. us or, or any of our loved ones. No, great. Well, thank you. Thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate yeah. your time. Mm-hmm.